everyone, it is cold outside, so I wanted to work on something that felt like springtime. This is the Bloom Quilt, and I can't wait to show you how to make it. So this quilt is made up of these beautiful big blocks and it comes together really, really fast. To make it, you're going to need one package of 10 inch squares and I use this beautiful collection called Maven designed by Maureen Cracknell for Art Gallery Fabrics. You're also going to need two and a half yards of your background fabric, three and three quarter yards of your backing and I just think this is so beautiful and three quarters of a yard for your binding. So on this quilt, we just did three blocks across by three down and it's sashed in between with a two and a half inch sashing and I quilted it all over with the variety quilt pattern and I think it turned out so beautiful. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, to begin, let's take a look at our block and we are going to start by making these outer corner blocks. And so to do that, you are going to need one of your 10 inch squares and a six inch background square, as well as some two and a half inch background squares. So let's begin, I'm just gonna press this so it lays nice and flat. And we're going to cut this first with a six inch strip, just like so. And then I'm gonna set this aside and we are going to sub cut this so it's a six inch square. And this piece here, you can just set aside. And then from this other larger piece, we are going to cut a two and a half inch strip And this little bit can be set aside. And we're going to turn this and sub cut it into two and a half inch squares. And so because this was 10 inches, you should be able to get all four. One more cut. There we go. And I'll just set those aside for now. All right, and now let's pair this up with our background square. Matches up nicely, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pin, and we are going to draw an X corner to corner in both directions. There we go, once we have that marked, we can take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch on both sides of those lines that we have drawn. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've gone down both sides of that first X and now we're gonna go ahead and go down the other line on both sides as well. Just gonna swing this around. Perfect. All right, now we have that done. I can go ahead and take my ruler and I want to cut this in half both directions and that should be intersecting our stitch lines there in the middle. So we'll make a cut this way and this way. Since this is a six inch square, it should be three inches in. And now that we've cut that, we can cut on each of these lines that we drew just like so. And this method gives you eight half square triangles 
which is the exact number we're going to need to make our corner units. So let's go ahead and finish trimming these. And then I will press them open and meet you back here to do some squaring. All right, so my preferred squaring tool is the block lock, and so I pressed mine first. If you like to use the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmers, obviously you would leave those closed and press at the end. And so we are going to square these to two and a half inches. And so if you have not used the block lock before, the lettering typically goes to the background side of your block, whichever side you are not pressing your seam towards. And then I can just line this up on here and it's one, two and a half is what I'm looking for. So we'll go ahead and trim off here and here. And then if you just rotate this and slide it down, now this is perfectly square on this side and I just have a tiny bit left to trim, just like so. It's beautiful and two and a half inches. Let's do that one more time because I have some of these ready to go already. So again, the block lock is on my background. This is nesting into that seam. Spin, slide it down to the two and a half inch mark and trim. So I already have some of these made. You're gonna square up all eight of them so they're ready to go. And let's go ahead and assemble our corner unit. So we're going to need two of these one of our two and a half inch print squares that we cut and one two and a half inch background square for each corner. And so I like to start with my print square and then I put my colors in towards the print and then we finish it off with our background square there. So we can just put these right sides together and take them both and sew on this side at the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. Just make sure everything stays lined up. And then we can follow this one in right behind it. Now I can just open this up, make sure everything is still going the way that it should be. That looks great. So let's go ahead, put those right sides together and we'll finish up our little four patch here. Just take a few stitches and then make sure that my seam is nesting in the middle here. And so all the way to the end. There we go, let's give this a little press. Beautiful. Now, I do wanna point something out because I see comments about this a lot when you're making a unit like this. See this little piece here? This is your quarter inch seam allowance and people are often worried that they've messed up the block. When you sew this onto the other block, that will nest up perfectly and you will not lose your points. So this is exactly what you're looking for. So you're gonna make four of these. I have the other ones ready to go. And then let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which are these blocks that finish up surrounding the outside. And so in order to do that, you're going to take two matching 10 inch squares. So I have this print here, so pretty. We're just gonna line those up nice and straight. And we are going to subcut these. I have two stacked together. So every cut I make, I'm gonna get two. Just wanna make sure it's not shifting on me. There we go. And we are going to cut these into four and a half inch strips and then subcut into four and a half inch squares. And we need eight total. So let's just make sure this is all straight on my mat. That looks great. All right, there's our cut number one. Set that aside. And then four and a half again. And then this little bit is our waist. So now we can either stack these. That's what I usually like to do. Oops, make sure you've got all four though. And then we're going to turn 
and subcut these into our squares. So again, just make sure everything is staying lined up. Here we go. There's one, and one more, and here's our waist. Okay, so these are all ready to go. And so now for each one of these four and a half inch squares, you are going to need two, two and a half inch background squares. And we are just gonna be snowballing, which means sewing corner to corner on the same side. So we'll sew one, trim it and press it back, and then we'll add the other. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine. If you want to draw a line or press a line, you can absolutely do that. I am just going to use my diagonal seam tape so I line up that first side with my needle and this opposite side with the red line on the tape. There we go. And then we can go ahead and trim off, leaving our quarter inch seam, just like so. If you have a little nest, this is super handy for this step because now we're gonna roll back that first corner and it's gonna look like this. And then we can add in that second two and a half inch square and see how it overlaps the first one. That's what we're looking for. And so we're gonna sew point to point. Again, lining up with my needle and sewing straight down. All right. Let's go ahead and trim that off as well leaving just our quarter inch seam allowance. And then we can roll this one back. Ta-da! That is what that little unit looks like. You're gonna repeat that eight times. I have most of these ready to go. And then you're gonna sew them into sets of two, just like this. And so I've got two here, we're gonna put them right together and sew down one side so that we have four sets of two. All right, just press that open so it's ready to go for later. I will add it to my other three so we have all four of those sets ready to go and we'll set that aside and now let's move on to the center. So for the middle, you'll notice we have one four and a half inch square and it's surrounded by these flying geese. So you can pick one of your 10 inch squares, subcut this down to four and a half and then you can actually use this in multiple blocks. So you can see I've used it here and here and you're gonna, you could use it up to four times, obviously. So I have the middle ready to go and now let's move on to our flying geese units. So for that, you are also going to grab a 10 inch square, obviously. And each one of these is actually going to be enough to make two of the middles. So again, you can see I've used it here and here. So just keep that in mind. So to begin, we are going to cut this down on one side so that it measures 10 by nine, so we'll just cut off this little outer inch and set it aside. And then we are going to spin this and we are going to cut it into two and a half inch strips all the way across the length of our rectangle. So we've got one, two, One more cut here. Whoops, almost cut it too wide. There we go. And so then once we've done that, you can stack these up if you'd like. And I'm going to spin it to make it easier on myself here. Just keep everything lined up. And we are going to cut these at four and a half, which should be right in half of our nine inch strip. 
So there we go. They are ready to go. And so four of these are what you're going to need for the block. This is going to be for another block. And so we are going to just pair these up now with our background squares. So here's my little stack of two and a half inch background squares. And so much like we did on our four and a half inch square, we are going to snowball the same side to create those flying geese units. So we'll sew corner to corner on one, trim it, press it back, and repeat that same process all four times. So let's go ahead and do that here. Here's that first seam. We're just gonna trim off, leaving that quarter inch. Press it back. And add the other side. So this is the exact same process that we did on that larger square. We're just doing it on a rectangle this time. press this back. There we go. And that is our little flying geese unit. You're going to repeat this four times and then we can start putting together our block. So we're going to clear some of this out of the way. Here is our little center. And then we are going to put a flying geese unit on either side. And then on top and bottom of that, I have taken a flying geese unit and just sewn a two and a half inch square to each side. So let's go ahead and sew these to the middle and then we'll sew each of these rows top and bottom. So we can fold it like so. Just bring all of this over here for me so it's close by for me to work. And we'll start putting this together. Take a few stitches, line it up as we go. And bring this around to the other side. Just gonna make sure everything is lined up the way that I want. Take your time here. And I'm going to press these in towards the middle so that they'll nest with my other pieces. Just like so. And we can go ahead and add our other units to each side. make sure everything's looking good. It looks great. We'll add this last piece to the other side and then the middle of our block will be complete. All right, there we go. The middle of our block is done. Let's give it a good press. So it lays nice and flat. Roll this side back as well. All right, now let's bring it over here so you can see how the rest of this comes together. Here's the center. And of course, we're going to build out our other units just like so. 
then finish it off with our corner blocks. The print is going to go in towards the middle, just like that. When you sew those together, your block is complete. I think it turned out so pretty. Like I said, it is three across by three down with a two and a half inch sashing in between and as that first little border to just float those blocks around. It finishes up at 56 inches square and I hope you enjoyed this bloom quilt. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.